Welcome to an introduction to hardware failover setup for the Assessor Solutions. The purpose of this video is to describe the concept of hardware failover and to describe the various hardware failover configuration options. If you have specific questions about setting up hardware failover in a particular scenario, I'd encourage you to reach out to our support staff who are always happy to be of service. First, an overview. Being in the redundancy business, Assessor often encounters users who require different levels of failover. Obviously, WAN link failover is one aspect to that. However, there are also many users who seek to remove any single point of failure in the network of any kind, either because there's a corporate or legal mandate that they do so, or perhaps it simply helps them sleep at night. Hardware failover is our solution for eliminating any single point of failure. For an overview of how hardware failover might work topology-wise, let's take a look at a basic, generic hardware failover diagram. There are a few important concepts to understand regarding hardware failover. There are typically, though not exclusively, two devices sitting side by side at the same location. Both devices would have the same access to network resources, the WAN connections and LAN network and such. However, one device would be in an active mode and the other in an idle mode. If something were to happen to the active device, the idle device would detect that and would assume the active role. In effect, the devices would switch those roles. With that in mind, let's take a look at the hardware failover configuration options. You'll find hardware failover configuration under the basic setup section of the web user interface. First of all, we have the hardware failover enable checkbox. Not surprisingly, you'll want to have that checked on both devices to activate this functionality. Next, we have the drop-down menu designating the device as either the primary or secondary device. Now, there's an important distinction to be made here. Each device needs to be unique. You don't want both devices to be set to primary. This designation is simply how the two devices tell each other apart. It's the active and idle designations that are truly important. You could have the secondary device be the active device, passing all the traffic, with the primary being idle, and that would be just fine. So during initial configuration, you'll want to configure one device, probably the initial device you're configuring, as the primary, while setting the other unit as secondary. The replicate to idle feature is very useful. It allows you to replicate the entire configuration from the active device to the idle device. So during initial configuration, you might completely set up the primary device, for the secondary device, you might only need to enable hardware failover and identify it as the secondary, connect the two together via the heartbeat cable, and then simply replicate the rest of the configuration from the primary device. If you make any changes in the future to the configuration of the active device, you can, again, simply use this button to replicate those changes to the idle device. You'll see it will also display the time of the last successful replication here as well. Force failover allows you to force an administrative failover. The currently active device will switch to idle, and the idle device would switch to active. You can also see at a glance here when the last failover occurred, although note that if you have email alerts configured, the Assessor device would also send out an alert should there be a hardware failover event. The status section will give you information as to the comparative connectivity between each device. You can verify the heartbeat monitoring between the devices, as well as compare the connectivity. Speaking of the heartbeat monitoring, the detection interval here will specify how often, in seconds, the devices send keep alive packets between each other, as well as how often they attempt to test to any configured WAN or LAN testing IP addresses. The failover after X intervals field specifies how many failures need to occur before a device failover is triggered. Setting this too low may cause false failovers due to normal network latency, while setting this too high may cause unnecessary failover delay after a legitimate failure. Generally, you can keep this at the default values, but the option is there to tweak it if circumstances require. The optional idle LAN settings allow you to configure IP addressing for the idle device. This sets up an easy way to administratively connect to the idle device. The idle test IP address allows you to specify an address on the LAN side of the devices to test to in order to detect a loss of connectivity. 
you'll need to check the LAN test IP address to enable that testing as well. The optional idle WAN settings are similar. However, these settings would be used to assign IP addresses for the idle device's WAN connections, again to facilitate easy administrative access to the idle device from the WAN side. The Keep Alive, again, is direct communication between the two devices. The port settings here allow you to specify which Ethernet port would be used for this functionality, as well as specifying any specific VLAN tagging or IP addressing you might want to use. Generally, these can simply stay at the default unless there's some unusual circumstance, however. Moving to the Advanced tab, we see that you're able to configure access to the idle device via the active device's WAN addresses. With this enabled, you can connect to both the active and idle devices over the single active address. However, access to a particular service does require a unique port be set between the two devices. For example, the active unit might be accessed via a particular IP address on port 80, while you might have the idle unit accessible on the same IP address on port 81. Finally, we have the active MAC setting. When hardware failover is enabled, the two devices share virtualized MAC addresses when in active mode. So if the primary device is active, it would use these active MAC addresses. If the primary fails and the secondary becomes active, it would take on these active MAC addresses. So that operation with switches or router devices is not disrupted. These can be changed to anything you wish, as long as the addresses are unique. However, typically there's no reason to change these from the default values. And that's it. Those are the various hardware failover configuration options. For additional information, please don't hesitate to contact our support department, who are always happy to assist.